you actually use the word enmity? I did. Wow. I haven't heard that since the, since the SATs. <laughs> enmity of elementary school children. Uh, what is the temperature in this room? <laughs> Do we know if it's adjustable? Do you know every human body radiates at 100 watts? Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. So this is like taking, you know, 700, 100 watt light bulbs and lining them up on all these chairs, and that's the heat getting radiated. Yeah. Okay. But as you move along through school, you become a little brighter than that, I think. You get a little more. I will see if we can adjust the temperature. It's surely cooler outside. We can just maybe open some windows. That would work. So I, I got a lot to share with you tonight. So, can you hang? You can hang? It's a lot. It's going to be maybe too much. But I'm here, and we're going to do a Q&A at the end, which is my favorite part. Because pretty much I've heard what I was going to say already, so <laughs> we have to just... Uh, can, you, can you read this in the back room? If not, I will read it for you. Adventures in Science Literacy. It's really Adventures in Science Illiteracy. These are the examples I'm going to give, and it's coming to you from the view of an astrophysicist. Now, often talks like this are just loosely veiled commercials, just so that the person can sell their book. This talk is no exception to that. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I, I didn't come here to talk about the books. Could you just read the book and what do you need me for? I'm here, I'll talk about stuff that's not in any of these books. Okay? Because I don't like talking about books. Because you can just buy the book. Now, there's stuff I could talk about, but I won't. Because it's slightly off topic this evening. But if you feel compelled to ask at the end, then fine. Okay? Stuff I could talk about, but won't unless asked. <laughs> the third of NASA's manned space program in the news. Lately. The demotion of Pluto from planet to dirty ice ball. <laughs> I actually had something to do with that. <laughs> Big Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> Some disgruntled folk. Who here was like upset that Pluto got demoted? Raise your hand. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bang, dark matter, search for planets, life, multiple years. Of course, the world is going to end in 2012, so the movie tells us uh, we can go there if you want at the end. So to tell you what we do here as scientists, we're just, we know we're aware of the way things work. That's what we do. That's our lives. Okay? How does the universe work? We're also fluent in math, or at least in the physical sciences, we're fluent in math. It empowers us. But notice I say it also empowers survival. And you might wonder, how does science help you survive? I'll give you a good example. I actually did this experiment. I did this experiment. I went up to people in the street. This, you have to do this in spring or autumn, like around this time of year, where it's not too hot to run the air conditioner and not too cold to roll up the windows and have the heat on. So people are driving with the windows open. Somebody can walk up to the driver and speak to them. Okay? So I go up to the red light, and I see people in the car, and there's some who are not wearing a seatbelt. And so I walk up and I say, excuse me. Okay, then they roll up the window. So I go this way, I say, excuse me. <laughs> Why aren't you wearing a seatbelt? And they'll give an explanation. They'll say, oh, well, it crinkles my dress, or it makes me, I can't, restricts me. Now, I don't know what else you had planned to do in the front seat. <laughs> what it is that, what are you restricted from, you're sitting there, right? So then I, and, and they give me their explanation. Then I say, have you ever had a class in physics? 100% of those people answer no to that question. Because if they did have a class in physics, they learn one of Newton's laws. Things in motion tend to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. You're a car moving 
50 miles an hour down the road, the car hits a brick wall, the car stops moving. You don't stop moving. You keep going at 50 miles an hour into the windshield. Now, just so you can appreciate how much that would hurt, um, consider the following. How much of a leash do I have here? That's pretty good. Whoa. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I probably won't have to come here to it. Okay, so watch. So imagine this is some kind of cement wall, all right? Is there anyone here who imagines that there's a speed below which you don't really need your, your seatbelt? Like you just go into the mall and it's a half a mile away. So give me a speed you think you might not need your seatbelt. Give me, 